Good morning. It's awesome to be in this beautiful state of Oregon. It's my first time for my wife, Trudy. Would you just stand? It's my wife, Trudy. And um, Trudy is originally from Namibia, and uh, I'm from South Africa. We've been missionaries with YWAM for the past 31 years. And during this time, I had the privilege I've ministered in 97 countries around the world. And the fun thing I do is what I did this weekend, introducing people to my best friend, the Holy Spirit. And we had awesome time this weekend, a lot of miracles. I've had a few, even this morning again, testimonies. But yesterday, people told me they got healed of pain in their neck. Somebody that we prayed for sleep up near that got healed. They, they could sleep for the first time in a long time and quite a number of other things. But God have an appointment for you this morning. And I trust that before we leave here, God's going to do something for you, for your family, for your friends, and whatever you need, Jesus is here. So let's just open our hearts and let's trust Him for what He wants to do in our lives. If you're here and, and you're just a young Christian, or maybe you've not yet committed your life to Christ also, I don't want you to leave here without doing that. And that's the awesome thing, coming together with Christians. Some of you have been uh, serving Jesus for 40 years. Some of you have just got saved last week. Or maybe you brought a friend or a family member and you're not saved yet. Let's not leave here unless you make your life right with God. I don't know if you think of what's happening in the world today. Uh, if you think it's bad or it's good. What do you think? If you, if you have to think, if I ask you, how's it going in the U.S. of A? Scary. scary. I had some of the millennials are a little bit scared. Do you know that what the enemy wants us to do is to see the negative sides, but actually that's not the full truth. There's so many great things happening around the world, and I can tell you as I've traveled to so many nations, all over the world, God is moving. In countries that you never thought possible, there's awakening among Muslim countries, in China, in Russia, in everywhere in the world I've been, I've seen, and I've seen this in the US. In this trip, we started in New York. We went to Connecticut for two days. Then we went to Colorado, in Nevada, and now we're here in Oregon. And I believe we're about to see an awakening like we have not seen before in this nation. As I told the guys in, in the conference this weekend, the last major awakening this nation saw was about 104 years ago. It actually started in 1906, the Azusa Street Revival. Have any of you heard of that? A few of you? That was amazing what God did through that. And that revival that started there in Los Angeles spread to every continent in the world. And I believe God is about to do something again where we will see thousands and thousands of young people coming into the kingdom. So don't look at the negative. See what God wants to do. This morning, I'm going to, if we can put the PowerPoint on, we're going to talk about a salt covenant. I don't know if you ever heard of this, but this is <laughs> biblical. There are actually quite a lot of scriptures about that. But before I get to the salt covenant, I I want to talk about God's covenants. God basically made, there are seven covenants in the Bible. The first covenant was in the garden. When God created the heavens and the earth and Adam and Eve was there and God made a covenant and he says, this is your planet. You are the boss. Everything on this planet is yours. Everything will be subjected to you. There's only one thing you can't do. Don't eat from this tree of knowledge of good and evil. And of course, you know the story, the enemy came, deceived them, and boom, they were, the covenant was broken. Do you guys know what's a covenant? The younger generation, the older ones maybe know. What is a covenant? It's between two people where you pledge to one another. Marriage is a covenant. So when we enter into a, into a covenant, we pledge to one another that we will be faithful, and if we do this on both sides, there's a blessing. If one of the sides break the covenant, it's not going well. So the second covenant God made was immediately, as Adam and Eve was out of the garden, God said, 
out of your seed, I will bring a redeemer. And he's one day going to crush this serpent's head. Yes, he will bite you on the heel, but you're going to crush his head. And I want to bless you. All the nations will be blessed through this seed that is coming. That was the second covenant. Third covenant was with Noah. That's after God destroyed the earth with flood. And then God said to Noah, never again will I do this. And for you to know that I won't do it again, I give you a covenant. And what was the covenant? Rainbow. So every time we see that, we remember. It's that promise of God. The next covenant was with Abraham. God called this man and said, I will bless you so that every nation on this, on this planet will be blessed through you. And that's a covenant that God made with his sons, and it continued actually even till today. If you look in different books on the New Testament, in the book of Galatians, in the book of Hebrew, it repeats it. It says, when you are a son or daughter of God, that covenant belongs to us. The next covenant was with Moses. So now the Israelites were in Egypt. They were slaves. Now, God didn't forget his covenant. The people forgot it. And then what happened, God called Moses and he reminded, it's basically a renewal of that covenant that God made. With, so when God made the covenant with Moses, he said the same thing. The only thing that was added was the Sabbath. And then the next thing was the Ten Commandments. But it's basically saying, if you follow this, if you do this, it will go well. So it's like that mutual, I want to bless you, but these are the things you have to do. And then the next covenant we come to is the one I'm going to talk to you about this morning. It's the covenant God made with David, the covenant of salt. Now, I'll show you soon a few scriptures, because I don't think many of you knew. In the Bible, it talks about God's covenant of salt that he made with Israel, but it specifically says the covenant of salt God made with David. So why, why am I taking a little bit of time to... To talk about this, I have been, as I told you, a missionary for 31 years. I grew up extremely conservative. I grew up in a reformed church. So the things about the Holy Spirit, the things about miracles, about signs and wonders was not part of my way of thinking. I grew up also very analytical. My first degree was a Bachelor of Science, Mathematics and Physics. I completed that, then I went to another university, did a degree in uh, education, then I studied some theology, and then suddenly I got stuck. I realized I can't help anybody. And God started to take me back to the Bible, not to what I studied, what my parents taught me, my grandparents, the church I grew up in, all the different universities I studied. God said, go back to the Word. And I started seeing that God made covenant with us, man. And the moment we line up with that, you know what happened? A miracle happened. Something shift and suddenly we experience a little bit of heaven here on earth. And somebody got healed like we happened this weekend. Somebody's life gets changed. Somebody that has struggled with depression and heaviness, it gets broken and suddenly freedom comes. And this morning, that's what God want to do to us. I, I want to share with you just a few testimonies of what I've seen. And, and I've had so many just incredible testimonies of people with cancer, the last stage of cancer, and God healed them. Now, I told the guys this weekend, most of my family are actually in the medical profession. I'm the only one that are a little bit not so... <laughs> no, I'm the only one that's wise. No, <laughs> also not true. But yeah, my whole family are doctors and dentists and psychologists and physiotherapists. I'm the crazy one serving Jesus without a salary, being a missionary. But you know what? As I connect and I, and I read about God's promises and I pray that out and I say, God, this is what you promise, suddenly a miracle happened. And somebody's life changed. I shared with the guys, there was a lady in our church in South Africa. She had stage four cancer. The doctors, my family said to me, it's finished. And we prayed and it was not a quick, was sometimes some miracles is like this. This one was a little bit longer. But in spite of the doctors gave her a 1% chance of success, 99% they will, she will die. 
because it was already spread from the liver to the lymph nodes to other parts of the body. They said it's finished. No, it's never finished. When Jesus comes, even when it looks finished, Jesus will come and bring life. I don't know what's your challenge today. Maybe your, your marriage broke up or maybe you're just so desperate at work. You, you, you just, I don't know how I'm going on. You know what? Jesus want to come and bring a breakthrough. I shared with the guys also this weekend, I met a guy, a doctor in Norway. His name is Dr. Swara Zal. He's an ENT, ear, nose, and throat specialist, and he suffered with severe depression. He said to me, Stefan, it was so bad, I didn't want to wake up in the morning. I don't want to go and work. It was like darkness over me. That depression was so heavy. And he, he actually felt he wanted to die. But you know what? Jesus came and he broke that spirit of heaviness over him. And he totally, he said it was like literally like a snap of a finger. It was over. And he said to me, Stefan, you can use my name wherever you go in the world and testify that I, Dr. Suarez Zal, got 100% healed. But you know who was the one who prayed for him in the midst of his darkness, in the midst of him feeling hopeless? Was his wife, Maria. Maria, she was crying when, when she spoke to me. She says, Stefan, my, I'm, I'm interceding for my husband. And I said, just remember God's promise. See, and that's what I'm, this morning, what I want to emphasize. We have a short time together. But in this time, I want to emphasize to you that God did not forget his covenants to you. We just need to remember. You know, the moment you committed your life to Christ, you went into a covenant with God Almighty. Who of you gave your lives to Jesus? Let's see. Okay, if you haven't, then we're going to pray for you. It's okay. I'm not going to look whose hands didn't go up. But every one of you that put up your hand now, you are in a covenant relationship with God Almighty, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. And God is the one that makes the covenant with you. And He's not a God that lies. So once we line up with God, the blessings of God come, the freedom of God, the miracles of God comes. But we need to remember that. I wrote down a few words that I believe God wants to heal this morning, words of knowledge. So often when I travel and I go to places and meetings, I ask God for a word. It's sometimes a thought, a picture, a sense of something that God wants to heal. And I've seen some spectacular miracles. That is impossible. I've seen people that are, that are HIV positive. Now, I know as a scientist, they can't be cured. You know that? Maybe you don't, but if you are HIV positive, you've got AIDS, they can treat, give medicine to treat it. I've prayed and God has healed people. And today they are HIV negative. Wow. I told you, with cancer, with other things. I felt there's somebody this morning, you've got a knee problem, and it's quite, gives you a lot of pain in your knee. And I believe Jesus wants to heal that. Is there anybody here that needs healing in your knee this morning? Okay, there's a brother, there's another, there's a sister there. There's a few here. Okay, we're going to trust God with you for healing this morning. I felt... There's a couple here, you are trusting God for a baby and you couldn't fall pregnant. And God wants to do a miracle. And we're going to pray with you this morning. Um, I also felt I wrote down someone who has called God, and uh, so God has called you a number of times into full time ministry. But you every time like, okay, no, no, it's not the time. No, it's not the time. I feel God wants to remind you again and says, today you need to decide. God is just putting his finger there and says, and I feel, I, I want to say this because I know some of the guys are going to watch this on video, the second session. I also felt this specific word is for the second session. You have been called, God has stirred in your heart, you know that, but every time you made an excuse and God says, Let's not walk out of here. At the end of the second service, go to Pastor Jason or some of the leaders and say, pray with me. I want to do this. I don't know how. I'm scared, but I'm willing. But even some of you here, if that's you, 
Not now because I'm saying it. God already spoke to you. I'm just confirming what God spoke. This is your day where God is stirring something. Let's go back to the, I'm going to continue with the salt covenant. Now here's a, just a scripture in Revelation 19 verse 10. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And people say to me sometimes, Stefan, why do you tell so many stories? Why do you tell all these miracles? You know why? Because I want you guys to see another miracle. The spirit, the, sorry, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Every time we share a testimony of something Jesus did in your life, in my life, in our lives, it releases the spirit of prophecy and another miracle takes place. Every one of you sitting here have a testimony. Even if it's just the fact that you got saved, that's a testimony. If you share that with one of your friends, that releases the spirit of prophecy and something happened. Pastor Bruce told me last night when his sister in the, in the Jesus movement got saved and he was like, what the heck are you talking about? She said, I found Jesus. <laughs> right, Pastor Bruce? And, and he was like, what are you talking about? But that was the first seed. And then the hunger came in him and eventually he got saved. You have something to share. And when we share that, God does something else. Covenant of salt. Now, here's a scripture. Whatever you set aside from the holy offerings, the Israelites present to the Lord, I give to you and your sons and your daughters as your regular share. It's an everlasting covenant of salt before the Lord for both you and your offspring. Now, this is interesting. This is the story I want to take you to this morning. So what happened was the, the tribes of Israel, those of you who've done the study of how Israel's history went. So Israel, God gave them the promised land. They took it. God blessed them, and then they forget. Every time we forget God's promise, something happened. So Joshua and the elders took the promised land. Moses couldn't enter in because he got angry and he hit the rock. And then what the Bible says, Joshua and the elders died and the people forgot and the other nations invaded. And then we have a 400 cycle of seven cycles with their judges. And it goes terrible with Israel because they forget. And then one person remember God's covenant, just one. And he's like, God, you promised this. God is like, mm-hmm. And he sent the angels. And everything changed. And then you have for another 30, 40 years, it's going well with them. And then they forget. And another nation come and invade them. It's not God who invades them. It's them that, does, that move away from the protection of God. And some of us have forgotten God's promises to us, to our children, to our family, to your personal, what God said. God wants to today remind you so that you can connect with that so that we can see a shift in our lives and our neighbors and our city. What happened then after the, the seven, that terrible 400 years of the judges, you have the three kings. They didn't want a judge anymore after Samuel. They got the three kings. First, it was King Saul, and he was not a good king. And then you had David, who had a heart after God. And then you had uh, Solomon, who had a heart after women. And bad things happen. Uh, and so at the end of that, the kingdom split. <coughs> Sorry. The kingdom split and 10 tribes went to the north of Israel and two tribes to the south. You guys know that story as the Bible? Okay, some of you know, some of you don't. So the 10 tribes in the north was called Israel and the two tribes in the south, Judah and Benjamin, was called Judah. The capital was Jerusalem. The north never served God. They had 19 different kings. Not one of them served God. The south had 20 kings, and there were eight of the 27 kings that served God. Now, this story is one of them. Abijah, <coughs> so, excuse me. <coughs> Abijah was now the southern king, and he was a godly man. He believed in God. The northern king, Jeroboam, 
Jerob, Jerob, Jeroboam, I don't know how to say that in English. <laughs> he was not a good one. He decided to attack the South. He had 800,000 troops, and the South had only 400,000 troops. Now, that's not a fair battle. So what happened? Abijah warns Jeroboam, and he says, do not attack us. God made a promise, and I'll give you that. Let's go there. He said to him, that's verse 5, don't you know that the God of Israel has given the kingship of Israel to David and his descendants forever by a? Wow. Covenant of salt. You've never seen this before. And he basically tells this guy, listen, do not attack us. God does not forget his promises. Yeah, you have got more men than us, but don't do it. The guy didn't listen. He actually surrounded them, and it looked like they're going to be wiped out. What does Abijah do? He cries out to God. He says, God, remember your covenant to us. And God heard. And you know what happened that night? A half a million of the northern troops were slaughtered. Half a million. And suddenly they only have 300,000 left and the south have more than them. See what happened? When we remember God's promise, that's all this guy did. Now I can give you dozens of stories like this where somebody, one person, remember God's promise and everything changed. The history. Guys, you're living in Salem, a city that was founded by Christians, a city that had history, a rich Christian history. A lot of it, we forgot about it. But God made promises. And if we start, one of you this morning in this service or in the second service says, God, I will take your promise. I want to pray. I want to remember what you promised me. Everything can change. There's some of you, you need to stand in the gap this morning for your family. Things just went bad. Your children are not serving God. They are far away from God. But God did not forget it. That's that same scripture. Don't you know? So 2 Chronicles 13 verse 5. If you want to read it up later. It's another one just talking about the salt covenant. Leviticus 2 verse 13. Why, why do we use salt? Why is the Bible? And again, the New Testament also, Jesus talked about salt. We are the salt of the earth. But why would God use so many times in the Old Testament about a covenant of salt? It's not the salt that does. It's like my ring is a symbol of my covenant with Trudy. It's not the ring that makes us marry. It's not the salt that's going to do the miracle for you this morning. It's Jesus. Are you with me? But this is the symbol. But why do we use this symbol? Anybody, what do you think? What does salt do? It's a preservative. Yes. And flavor. Yes. Without salt, food tastes horrible. You can cook the best food. But if you forget to put a little bit of salt, it just tastes nasty. That's right. I know some of you don't eat salt on your food anymore. I'm sorry for you. <laughs> it's not nice. Um, so we look at it was used for medicine. You know, when they didn't have medicine, this is good. When you need to have a, you have a wound and you don't have medicine, salt will help that it doesn't get an infection. To preserve food to cleanse and to uh, taste. What I've learned now since I live in Norway, it also helped with ice. We have snow for two, three months of the year, like three feet high or more, and you need a lot of salt to help it. You don't slip and in your driveway, and so it's good for that too. There was another example in the Bible of salt. The water was poisonous, 2 Kings 2, verse 20 to 21. And the prophet said, bring me a bowl of salt. And I bring, they brought it, and then it, it healed the water. And suddenly the water was not poisonous anymore. This is what Jesus says. Matthew 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. Mark, no, that's another one there. 
Colossians 4 verse 6, let your conversations be full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. I had the privilege, I taught this message a few places around the world last year. It was last year God gave me the revelation of this. I've never before, I've been a Christian for many, many years. I've been in ministry for 31 years. Last year was the first time that I saw the covenant of salt. And I just, again, it's symbolic. Don't worship the salt. Don't, it's not going to be something special. You know, in, when Moses used the copper snake, when the snakes bit them and they worshiped that, that was bad. God says, don't worship. This, this is just symbolic today. But we're going to all partake in the salt if you want to. We have there at the communion table, there in front, this side, that side. There's four here in the front and two stations at the back where you can go and take some salt. And just remember God's covenant. But I just want to share with you a few testimonies. Last year I was in Germany. I was in a, in a town close to Stuttgart. That's where Mercedes Benz is. And there was a, a couple, they didn't tell me about it. About six weeks later, the lady wrote me a message. Her name is Sabrina and his name is Jens. They have tried for seven years to have children. And the doctor said, it is impossible. You cannot have children. So that morning when I did the salt thing, they came and said, God, your word promised children is a blessing from God. They walk, they took the salt, and they said, thank you, God, for what you promised us. And that's it. Six weeks later, she, got, she had pain in her breast. She went to the doctor, thought there's something wrong with her. The doctor examined and said, you're going to have a baby. You're pregnant. And she said, it looked like two or three days after they partake, they took the salt. She fell pregnant. She actually had the baby. I, just, I saw it on Facebook two, two or three weeks ago. The baby was born. A miracle against the advice of the doctors. I told you about this guy that, was, that had severe depression. His wife, Maria, said, God, you promise to break that spirit of heaviness. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 61, instead of a spirit of heaviness, I give you a garment of praise. And God broke this thing. He starts to minister now in their church. He takes the men for men's groups. Swarazal, when God broke that spirit. When I was in Australia last year, I was in Perth, and I did this at a community. There was about five, six hundred. And uh, a lady had a severe knee injury. And she said, God, she said, I couldn't walk the stairs because the place where they live, they have to climb the stairs every day, two, two flights of stairs up. And um, she said, I'm trusting you. And she took the salt and she said, she woke up and it was 100%. There was no more. God healed her. Yes. It's not the salt that healed her. It's Jesus that healed her. Are you with me? But I don't know what you trust in God for today. I felt also one of the words I wrote down. There are some of us here, you've been so worried about your children. You, you've been praying and I feel God says, I've heard your prayers. Something is going to shift. Last year, another miracle, I was in, in Canada, in British Columbia, Victoria, the island, and there's a lady, Margaret, that I've known for a number of years. She said, my son has not been to church for more than 20 years. And she went and took the salt. She contacted me, she said, Stefan, my son is back in church. He's actually helping the worship team now. And God just did something. And for the first time in 20 years, he took his children. I saw her grandchildren. She's so happy. She said, I was just crying and crying because my son came back to Jesus. The grandchildren are coming. I don't know what you need to trust God for today. But God wants to do something that breaks natural laws, physical laws. Whatever happened, whatever disappointment, heaviness, discouragement, God wants to touch that today. So let's not leave here. We have a short time together this morning, but in this short time, Jesus can meet with you. And I've seen in seconds, God break things over people's lives, give hope against hopelessness. I was speaking in a, in a church uh, last year in South Africa, and suddenly 
I just stopped and I felt, God said, there's somebody that wants to take your life. And God says, don't. There's a purpose for you. That's all I said. And I went on. The pastor called me after the service. He said, Stefan, you know what happened afterwards? I said, no. He said, the lady came to me, opened a handbag, took a gun out. And she said, I bought this yesterday. I was about to kill my partner and then I want to kill myself. And that word, and boom, God broke that. God came in the midst of hopelessness and brought hope. And that's what I want to say to you today. I, I don't know how challenging it is for you. Maybe in your school or your college, you just feel, I can't go on. God says, you can. I will help you. You know, when, when Trudy and I moved from Africa, so God called us. We were missionaries in, in Africa for th nearly 30 years. And God started speaking to us about going to Europe. And I was like, no freaking way. Please, God, don't send me to Europe. <laughs> These guys are quite stubborn. It's difficult. <laughs> the Germans and the Dutchies. And, and God said to me, but they need to hear about the Holy Spirit. And then my family said, how are you going to survive, Stefan? It's very expensive. Are you stupid? What do you want to do there? You know, it literally, where we live in Norway, it cost me 80% more than what it cost in South Africa. Literally, 80% more. But you know what? Times when three, you know, I'm not sure how we're going to pay our rent a month. How are we going to buy our food? We go and say, God, you promised. And God comes through. We have not gone hungry once. Every time we were able to pay. Sometimes it was very late. <laughs> it was like, you know, tomorrow is the day I have to pay my landlord. And I'm like, God, what are you going to do? And suddenly someone just come and says, Stefan, I just felt God want to give you something. And that was then exactly enough that I could take it to the landlord. My landlord doesn't like me to pay cash. So it was a few times. I, I said, I, I, I can't do it a different way. I don't have money in my bank to transfer it to you. He's like, okay. And he's like, you know, the, the Norwegians are very... <laughs> yeah. Father, thank you. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up. So just again, the, the specific words I wrote down, but please don't limit it to that. I felt somebody with a knee that causes you pain. In other words, I didn't say that I actually had on Thursday night, but I feel it's again for today for somebody here. There's somebody that's struggling with a, with a stiff neck that is quite painful. I, I don't know if you had an accident or something happened, but your, your neck is quite stiff and God wants to heal that. And then I felt someone struggling to fall pregnant. It's only for the married ones. Please don't. <laughs> We're not going to do this one if you're not married, not yet. <laughs> Get a partner and then a husband, a wife, then we do it. Someone who has been called, that one I said earlier, God has called you for full-time ministry. And God is saying today, he's reminding you of what he told you actually a few times. And then there was somebody worrying about your child. You've been praying for your child. God says, I did not forget. And then the last one I wrote, and again, I'm, I'm risking with God. I was sitting here. I actually wrote it just, just before I came up. I wrote cancer, but I, I felt, I didn't write that down, but I felt the word I use is mommy and poppy cancer. Father, you know, in the reproductive cancers, I feel there's people here that you have a, cancer that have to do with your reproductive system and God wants to heal that today if that's you as we take so let me just show you how we're going to do it <coughs> so the one I have salt in and the other one is empty so you're going to come there's different stations all over the auditorium just come and take a little bit salt and remember what God promised you what are you trusting God for? For healing, for restoration in your marriage, for your child to get saved, for I don't know what it is. Whatever it is, Jesus paid for that. Are you with me? We just need to remember, because this was actually, this covenant God made with David, the next covenant, this, the last covenant. So I told you there's seven. This was the sixth covenant in the Bible. Number seven was the covenant Jesus did with His blood. And you can also, so once we've had the salt, if you want to take communion, you will see the communion tables are there. But let's first finish the salt and then you can go back 
and take communion because that's the reason we even do this symbol of salt. Jesus' body was broken. Jesus' blood was spilled so that me and you can have life, can have restoration, can have forgiveness, can have whatever. Jesus paid for that. Thank you, Jesus. So the table is open. You can just come and help yourself at any one of the spots. And you can even come back a second time. So maybe you want to go for yourself and then you want to go with a family member, with your husband or wife, or with a friend in the church. Say, I'm praying with you for restoration of this. You know, there's a friend here with you that need a miracle. Go for the second time. But first, I want you to meet with Jesus. Thank you, God. We just say, Jesus, thank you that you have paid the price, the ultimate price, so that that covenant you made with us, when we became your children, we actually inherit the promises that you made already with Abraham, with Moses, and then of course also with David. So I pray today, this morning in this service and in the second service, miracles will take place. God, restoration will come. Those who are struggling with depression and heaviness, it will be broken. Those who have physical pain in their bodies, it will be healed. Those who have the cancer in their reproductive systems, they need healing today. God, that you will come and as you curse that fig tree, when it was not bearing fruit. I want to curse the cancer in their reproductive systems. And I want to say, cancer, you will shrivel up in the name of Jesus and you will not continue to grow. At this moment, I speak death, but it will say, Lord, as they just remember your promise, as they partake of the salt, something will happen. Just, I, I want to welcome you. There in the back is two stations here in the, four, in the front is four. Just come. And, and the worship team will continue and we will just allow Jesus to come and do the miracles. Thank you, God, your presence.